Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. Right, so yesterday was the 42nd anniversary of Elvis's death, so um, I guess it got me thinking like a lot of people and, you know, I was thinking about Mystery Train. And although it's one of those songs which, you know, you could say it's been played to death a little bit, it still really is one of the quintessential rockabilly tracks. It really encapsulates a lot of what is wonderful and fantastic about rockabilly guitar. So I thought it wouldn't hurt to just take a little look at this. Um, you know, this is just basically, we've got just a regular E major. I should say, I'm using, I've got like a slapback delay and it's just about um, 126 milliseconds. So here's just my E major, I'll just play through a few, some of the kind of strings, a little staccato, just so you can kind of get an idea of the delay. And you know, I kind of use this technique of my thumb and, um, you know, middle and ring finger. Um, occasionally my little finger also if I'm kind of, you know, doing some more um, kind of chord work. But this can work for, you know, you can use kind of any technique, um, whether it's like Scotty Moore, thumb pick and fingers, um, or, you know, kind of more traditional hybrid picking pick and, and two fingers. Um, but I'm just going to stick with what I, I kind of typically use. So we're based around this E major. And the only other thing we're going to do as we sort of move through this um, this riff, is to um, you know we you know in E major we've got our third finger on the second fret of the fourth string. We'll we'll flatten that third finger, so it will end up also kind of like barring the second third strings also. So now um, when we flatten our finger, we're we're, we're um, barring the second third and fourth strings, the second fret. We've got our E major. And in many ways, this, you know, we're just playing those three notes, the fourth and third and second strings with the low E also. You know, it's just like an A major with an A in the bass. But when you have that kind of pedal tone, like the, the low E drone going on, it's got a completely different flavour, so it just doesn't sound, you know, typical A major. So the first thing about this riff, I mean, um, you know, we just think about one bar and we've got four beats in that bar. So for beat one, we'll play the open low E. For beat two, we'll play the fourth string. Beat three, low E. And beat four, the fourth string. Um, I kind of use the side of my thumb a little bit just to get more of a sharp attack. Rather than kind of a more dull. I like to get something which is, you know, similar to the pick, but not quite as, um, not quite as uh, sharp. You know, one of the things about Travis picking is that although we're alternating between the sixth and fourth string, um, a lot of the time, well, depending on the position we're in or the chord, and what's happening with the other fingers, is that um, it's not just the fourth string that's it's sort of hit with the thumb, it kind of follow throughs a little, and you can often catch the third and the second string, or they ring, they might ring through a little sympathetically just through the, the kind of, the, not the power, but you know, the, the, the way it's uh, played. And that helps to fill in the harmony a little bit more when the space and, and we're able to do that. So just, um, you know, someone who's just getting into this now, it really is worth your while just, you know, it's easier said than done to try and spend a little time with just um, keeping this E major and just um, working the thumb or your pick just to get a real sense of uh, alternating between the sixth and fourth string. You know, and if you've got your delay, 
excuse me, try to, uh, you know, get that sound. I saw the slap back, kind of bubbly slap back. So they're on beats one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Or even a slower, it's like a slower tempo. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. But it's always those. With beat one, six string, beat two, the fourth string, beat three, the sixth string, beat four, the fourth string. So to now put this riff together, we'll, uh, we're still playing our E major. So I'm um, with my um, middle and ring finger, I'm going to, at uh, the same time playing the, the fourth string with my thumb, I'll play the third and second strings. So that they're on beat two. You could just practice playing that for a while. Again, if you're not used to kind of picking multiple strings at once, just kind, kind of get like that, you know, the, the rhythm and groove happening of that delay. That's beat one, two. Beat three is the low E again. Now the main difference here is that now we'll make this shape we talked about before where we flatten our finger, it's, you know, kind of like an A. And this, um, here we're going to play just with the fingers and this, because this is on the AND of beat three. So this will be strings three and two, the second fret. And then beat four, I've still got the, the shape kind of flattened, uh, the fourth string. No matter what you're picking style with the, with the right hand, try to also use some kind of like rhythm in your arm. Let, let that do some of the work. You know, th these kind of things, you don't have to pick too hard and don't make yourself too tense. And putting that kind of rhythm in, you know, um, will just make so much more difference to how the piece grooves with other people, but also how it feels to you. So a couple of things that I've heard done to this. Now, I think because Scotty typically used like these two, you know, his index um, and middle finger and his thumb, although he had a thumb pick. Um, so if I was to play that, this, you know, that way. I hear sometimes, I hear in the record sometimes this high E string. So I guess sometimes he'll have played for that second beat where normally we're just playing the fourth string with our thumb. Uh, third string, second string with, with, you know, two fingers. Maybe he plays three, uh, four strings in total. And then when we do the flattening, <clears throat> excuse me, we do the flattening of our fingers, I think he just goes back to two fingers and just plays on those inner strings again. And I think just alternating between the two, sometimes with two fingers, sometimes with three. You know, these things were just so sort of off the cuff and improvised, I doubt there was any kind of set pattern. But sometimes I do hear that high E ringing through. So when I play that, for example, and I'm just using uh, two fingers, well, so, so for beat one, the open low E, uh, something beat two, well, maybe I'll be playing the fourth string, of course, with my thumb. And maybe, uh, you know, one time round, I'll choose to play the third and second strings. Or so another time, maybe I'll choose to play the fourth string, but, but the second and first strings. But when I do a flattening shape, I always play the um, strings at four, three, and two. And if I'm playing this, I only play that, that one with the high E and the second string, you know, the B. Um, not very often, but just it just helps to, I don't know, cut through a little more if you're just playing the, 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 the original just there. Uh... 
So you can just help to change, you know, the kind of colour and the dynamics of the whole thing a little. Uh, another one of the most typical is the hammer-on of from the open third string to the to the first fret of the uh, third string, to, which makes our E chord. So as we, so we like before we play the open low E beat one on beat two, we play um, the three strings as usual fourth, third, and second. But as we play that, we hammer down our first finger onto the first fret of the third string, and then you know continue as as before. which is just a basic extension of that, it's just a hammer on the whole shape on beat, uh, on beat two. So I think these things with the hammer-ons can be useful when you just want to, you know, you've got your standard kind of, you know, mellow, um, on the, you know, on the track groove. the odd little hammer on and then things like with the you know changing the strings maybe if we use the first and second strings just for a bit more intensity and then the whole hammering hole you know that shape just for you know another sort of level of um you know dynamics and kind of um you know color so for the main riff that's basically it but um this this kind of picking pattern now we, you know, if I was to play this just with a just a regular E major and not do the not do the flattening shape, it would just sound like this. Which you know is certainly not as interesting, but that pattern itself um, is so useful for so many sort of like rockabilly tracks and things like that. So although you're practicing it, practicing it maybe for mystery train, don't underestimate its value. This is going to be, uh, you know, probably maybe one of the most important kind of, you know, like picking Travis picking patterns, and um, you could learn. So um, even if you're used to it, it's always good maybe just to start up, get the, you know, the rhythm happening with the delay. Try different levels, you know, dynamics of how. You know, you want to play that very soft. Right, so that's basically it. That's the main riff. Um, try that out, you know, go through it slowly, work on the thumb, and then just... Um, you know, always counting in your head, make, you know, your left, left foot tapping, um, you know, and try and get a groove happening with your, with your thumb first and then bring in the fingers. And, um, yeah, you'll, you'll get it happening in no time. Just stick at it. So um, I hope it helped. And, uh, yeah, I'll be exploring more of this track and going through, uh, you know, more stuff like this on my Patreon page. So if, um, if you like this and you're interested in more regular lessons, you should check it out, definitely. Right, well, thanks for watching. Take care and see you soon. Cheers.